At the accountability desk, we're taking a look at the crime numbers as Baltimore City continues to see an increase in some of the most violent crimes. Taking a look at the homicide and non-fatal shooting numbers to date, as of Tuesday morning, 215 people have been killed. 437 others have been shot. Both statistics for homicides and non-fatal shootings are both up compared to this time last year. In 2021, there are 390 non-fatal shootings. And in 2021, the homicides were 195. And remember that each number represents a name and a family forever impacted by this gun violence. And if the city continues on this current pace of homicides and shootings, Baltimore could end the year with 366 homicides. So with these numbers in mind, we wanted to see how many of these shootings are happening in the 10 different safe streets catchment zones. Now there have been a lot of different homicides and shootings of the last year, so we use data from the Baltimore Police Department to look at these numbers for just the last seven days. There have been four different shootings in three catchment zones. Bel Air Edison, Penn North, Belvedere. These four instances make up about 15% of all of the homicides and shootings that have happened in Baltimore over the last seven days. And I really want to show you just how small these catchment areas are when you look at all of Baltimore. Here's a map of all of the 10 different safe streets locations and their entire catchment zones. According to the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, or MONSI, these catchment zones make up about 3% of the entire city. But this program continues to get the support of Mayor Brandon Scott and his team, despite the fact that we have seen several high profile incidents like a shooting in North and Longwood Avenues, leaving two people dead or shootings in homicides in Canton and Fells Point. One leaving a bouncer dead or this one, the squeegee kid incident where a 15 year old now facing first degree murder charges after Timothy Reynolds was killed at Light and Conway Streets following an incident where Reynolds got out of his car and swung a bat at the group of squeegee kids. All of these incidents are happening in areas without safe streets locations. Oh, while the mayor and his team continue to say these community violence programs are aiming to prevent violence from happening in the first place. So that brings us here. We have Anthony Barksdale and Shante Jackson. Barksdale, deputy mayor for public safety, and Jackson oversees Monzi. I asked the mayor's office for an interview with both leaders, especially since Anthony Barksdale's newly appointed to his position. We want to find out their plans to implement safe streets, as well as the other community violence intervention programs, given the fact that we know these programs are getting millions of tax dollars and their effectiveness remains in question. Our request to the mayor's office has yet to be granted. At the Accountability Desk, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News.